Ryan, we're here talking about uh, one specific exhibition in the, uh, in the show, Here to Stay. Uh, it's called um, From a Legacy of Neglect, Time Capsule, which you produced uh, specially for, you know, quite a special project in 2006 in Bologna. Could you tell us a little bit about, you know, uh, the work and what brought you to develop uh, this particular uh, installation? So I was invited to Bologna by the curator and, uh, Andrea Villiani to come and look at um, this Le Capucier building, Esprit de Nouveau. And when I got there, it hit me straight away that this building had seen loads of history. And I guess I've always had a preoccupation with the idea of history and the idea of parapossible histories. And it started me thinking about time and the way we understand time. So all those things were whirling around my head and I started thinking about this building as a time capsule. The artwork that is at the museum in Bolzano is, well it's a strange artwork because it's an artwork in two parts and the artwork that is being shown is a slideshow of images that relates or is the sort of the proof or the offcut or the byproduct or the receipt of something that doesn't actually exist yet, a work that will be made in the future. It's funny because I made that work thinking I might be dead in 50 years. And of course, <laughs> the older you get, we're halfway through. The more you think, oh no, I'll last till 90 yes. or 100 or 110. <laughs> As time runs out, you change your mind about the duration of your life. It's around the corner. So, <laughs> And it's a really simple idea, it is essentially a time capsule, but instead of a time capsule that you dig up, like in a garden, it's a time capsule that uh, is a set of instructions that is hidden in a safety deposit box, in a vault, uh, in a bank in the city of Bologna. And the instructions are, they will contact uh, the children or child descendants of Le Corbusier and they will ask them to make a painting and then the painting will be used in a repeat pattern uh, as itemised and directed in these instructions by me and it will be printed on fabric and it will make huge curtains for the giant windows in the pavilion and they will be hung. Because that's so. interesting because I, I really thought, sorry to interrupt but like um because that was, that was what I was wondering, like many of your interventions um, into that building uh, project like almost like an endless uh, perpetuation of loops, right, into the future. But this work has a very clear, you know, it, uh, assignment as saying like, okay, it's an opening or like it's an exhibition uh, in uh, 2056. And uh, so I was really thinking of like, okay, what is the afterlife of this work? If it has, like, it's the, one of the only works in that whole set which has a really clear end point. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess what's funny is that, you know that all artists are completely obsessed with the notion of legacy and provenance. And I mean, whether they admit it or not, all artists are huge egomaniacs. And the main preoccupation for being an artist for most people is because they're self-obsessed and they want to leave a trace of themselves in history. You know, a lot of artists claim noble reasons for making art or that it's the only thing that they could do or if I didn't make art, I'd end up in prison or, you know, uh, I love to make a contribution to the history of art or it's the only thing, you know. But really, it, I think that it comes down to the self for a lot of people. It was also questioning that and the idea of a self-portrait, a conceptual self-portrait. And I thought it would be interesting that if uh, in 2056, I no longer made work or I wasn't here anymore, um, this would be my final work. In this fantastic book you made also in the, for the occasion, um, the intellectual colors uh, in which you basically, uh, you know, really map out this landscape of interventions in the building and the references and so on. You, you or like someone is a, um, a writing there is like, you know, a good 
um, time capsule uh, needs to also really be able to capture a, a, a zeitgeist. How do you look back f with your you know, 2021 self uh, to that time as an artist and that period of production? I think we're in an era of the self. In this kind of obsession with the self, you get a lot of noise and you get a lot of people fighting for attention. And that on top of the fact that, you know, money is no longer our greatest asset. Time and attention, especially attention, is our greatest asset, which is being dictated to by social media companies who fight for attention because attention is wealth. And I've always thought that the art world was the place where boring stuff could happen that was incredibly interesting not just the shiny stuff. <laughs> That's a very negative end to the conversation. <laughs> All right. Uh, Ryan, thank you so much for your time. No, it's a pleasure, yeah. Nice to see you. It's, uh, it's always a pleasure to see you. Yeah, keep in touch. Aye, we will.